It is a sad story. Sudan used to be looked at as the land of opportunities, the land of mighty people. The Arab don't respect us. The Arab don't give us our right. The Arab don't give us our dignity. They don't see us as people. I feel very sad. I think uh, we, had, we have arrived to, to, to a very dangerous point where we should or we have to divide our country. Most of the people are working for separation, that they have to separate for them from the north. Enough is enough. A new national anthem for a country yet to be born. The lyrics and music were created here at Juba University in southern Sudan. يجا هم بيقولوا نحن عرب لكن الحياة هنا في في tolerance في تسامح في integration with the community بعدين الناس هنا ناس كلهم طيبين وطيبين باعتبار it is nature by the way دي طبيعتهم هم كده الناس يعني حتى ما في any sort of discrimination I cannot feel it فكل قبيلة هنا عندها ثقافاتها عندها تقاليدها عندها عاداتها يعني هنا بتجد في المجتمع هنا في مسيحيين في مسلمين في ناس لا دينيين كمان العالم ده كله هو وطني هو وطني لأنه بيهمني فيه الإنسان في المقام الأول ولا بد بيننا كأناس كبشر نتجاذب أو نتناول كل هذه الأنواع الثقافية الموجودة سواء كان في أفريقيا في البلاد العربية. بس السودان هو في الشمال بس لكن في كل الناس إنت لو طلعت على شرق السودان حتلقى في حضارة وفي تاريخ وفي ناس صنعت حضارة لو مشيت جنوب السودان برضو بنفس الغدر طبعا ظروف الحرب هي خلت الوضع كما هو عليه الآن لأنه هنا بقى السودان ما اسمية واحدة ولا دين واحد ولا نوع واحد من البشر ما مش أمة واحدة أنا إحنا أمم كثيرة في السودان المسلم مسلم المسيحي مسيحي ما في حاجة أنا جاي شغال هنا في الجنوب والجنوب ده والسودان واحد السودان ده واحد ما السودان اثنين أنا في السودان هنا في الجنوب عندي وطا عندي شبير كان متبت فلوني هنا ده ما في حدا It is the British to blame because they wanted the South to be a separate Country. And that was a great mistake. They should have allowed the intercourse, the social and, uh, uh, and uh, 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 cultural in intercourse between the North and South to develop naturally. They didn't. They disrupted it. They thought that the South was uh, a cultural vacuum. It should be filled uh, with Christianity. The British were trying to get rid of the Islamic influences in the South. They wanted Southern Sudanese to be converted to Christianity by allowing the missionaries to operate in the South Sudan. They just didn't want Northerners to spread Islam. Islam was developing fast there. So uh, it is obvious that uh, their motive was to stop Muslims from being there to spread Islam, especially that Muslims at the time were very, very devout Muslims. The then Prime Minister, Abdullah Khalil, negotiated a handover of power to the military. He invited 
Ibrahim Abud, General Ibrahim Abud, to take over power. Abud, 1958. That just two years after independence. It's very rare that a country that has been fighting for independence for years and years and years, and then immediately after independence, is gone away, taken away from them by the military. It's very, very rare. It was, uh, you know, a handover to the military. Khartoum was the Beirut of Africa, or was the Paris of Africa, even. As Beirut used to claim that they used to be the, the Paris of the Middle East, we believe that Khartoum was also, at that time, uh, in the way of having uh, an open market, as I said, latest products from London, from New York, from Paris. You can find it right in this street. But also, culture, entertainment, the freedom of having parties, wedding parties, all through the night, if you wish. I mean, uh, we, 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 everything was just uh, a normal, uh, happy life, to be honest with you. Those people have been through so much because of the political changes. So this country has been through so much, they, you know, anti-culture, anti-music, anti-arts, anti-so on. And then you have the curfews for so many years, and then you have uh, the closure of all the entertainment places. And they're still playing. There is a big gap between our generation and the new generation today. We don't speak the same language. We don't, when we talk about democracy and freedom, what is democracy and what's, what's freedom? <laughs> in fact, they say, hasn't democracy failed in this country? Do we need freedom? We started action exactly on 19th of September, 1963. We started with our bare hands, I myself, entered the, the bush with machete in my hand. I had no, no gun. I had three old guns, which I gave to my company commanders. I organized the guerrilla army and called it Anyanya. Uh, Anyanya is name of a poison, uh, which is used by some tribes, including my own, uh, Madi tribe and uh, it is a deadly uh, poison. If it touches you, or it is given to you in water or in food, there is no medicine for it. <laughs> 